This is absolute insanity. A wolf in the middle of the highway right as we drove up. An actual wolf, guys, in the freaking wild and it's so just sitting there and it's howling. So today we are heading into the Yukon, our final province in the very north of Canada before we get to Alaska, which is known for having epic views. There's pine trees and mountains and rivers and as far as the eye can see, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you probably can't do anywhere else. I've clearly never planned for gold day in my life, but a small piece on my thumb, I think this is gold. There. That's, that's gold? Yeah. So right now we are on the Alaskan Highway, the final stretch here in the north of Canada. Gas stations in the Yukon are very far and very few in between. It's not rare to have several hundred kilometers between one gas station and the next. And we're finding ourselves in a bit of a pickle here. We're gonna fuel up here. This gas station doesn't exist anymore. And it's 140 kilometers to the next one. And I've got 180 kilometers still left, which is cutting it really close. And there's one 100 kilometers back. If okay, wants to go back, I say continue. Maybe switch the engine off for a minute? No? <laughs> Let's save on gas. We have 180 kilometers now. It's 140 till we get there. If we use more than it says on the thingy, we're screwed. Like we, we will run out of gas and... I know it sucks to go 100 kilometers back, but... I would just continue. Like it's it's 200 kilometers extra to go back. Okay. Fine. That's good for the biscuits. So five kilometers in. How much gas did we use for those five kilometers according to that thingy? Twelve. We can't drive 140 kilometers if that thing says 180. <sighs> I know. I know. It sucks. Turning it really around sucks. sucks yeah. What it says on the dashboard of what I can uh, still drive keeps dropping really, really fast. I don't know what's happening, but I'm not even sure if we're going to make like the 100 kilometers at this pace. Are you kidding? Are you actually kidding? I'm not. There's nothing here. We're out in the middle of nowhere. It's been like this for the last 1,000 kilometers. So if we get stuck here, like it would really suck. We have to flag down a car and bike. 50 kilometers to the gas station. Yeah, that's true. Glad that at least we made it. And we get to drive another day. It doesn't fit very well, so I need to kind of like shove it in there. But at least you can guess up. Come on. All right, we're back where we were two hours ago, but at least we have fuel. We're gonna make it. We have enough to make it to White Horse now. And this was actually one of the most beautiful highways uh, we've driven, so it's not too bad to drive this part again. Oh my god guys, we just saw another bear, like he was right next to the road. It's a really young black bear. Damn, there were a lot of bears here. Now you can see him. Look, there he is. A little black spot here. He's just eating. He's still young. Just a teenager. Wow, this is so cool. Should we move back a bit? He keeps coming towards us. We stayed there for like 10 minutes while it was just eating from the bushes and then it went on its merry way into the forest. It's amazing. This is amazing. Hey there, little fox. You uh -huh. looking foxy tonight? You're not supposed to be in the middle of the highway, you cutie. Yeah, you. How are you doing? Yeah. 
Good morning. Good morning from White Horse in Yukon. We got here yesterday at 11 p.m. Um, and then I worked until 1 a.m. on translation stuff that I haven't been able to do for the past couple of days and I really needed to get it done because there was a deadline and there was internet here and blah blah blah. We're at the Real Canadian Superstore parking lot. Lately it's kind of been getting harder for us to find a balance between like the work that we do, like work work, like freelance work, our translation work, um, and the editing and filming side of stuff, like YouTube I guess, um, because right now for us it's the freelance work that brings in the bulk of the income, like I'd say at this point probably 75 to maybe even 80% of the money we make comes from freelancing so we need to do it in order to pay for everything and we have loads of opportunities to freelance and we actually have so much work at the moment that we've been turning clients down because we're like if we keep taking on more work we will no longer be actually enjoying ourselves as much and and traveling as much and that's what this was all about how many hours a week would you say we spend technically working working like traditional work i have no idea at this point a lot I guess it would be 50 hours a week, I guess. Like freelance work alone? Yeah. Not possible, I think. That's well, too much. 40 maybe? 40? Yeah, probably 40. I, I'm pretty sure it's like 40 hours a week. 90% of what we do is translating English to Dutch, uh, translating websites, apps, uh, marketing content. Right now we have some high volume clients yeah. like that bring in a lot of work and we don't know how long that's going to last and we sort of want to take advantage of that for as long as we can, yeah. then it's like, like a lot of like work. Like three weeks they came to us like, we have a really big project for you, it's a few thousand dollars, so can you do this? And I mean... We technically couldn't. We technically couldn't, we don't have the time for it, but I mean, we can't pass up on a few thousand dollars of work. We tried like living off of our YouTube income, just for that, but I mean... Right now it's not possible. It's not possible, we don't make a lot of money. I mean, how much do we make about it with YouTube a month? If we don't do any sponsorships, US dollars. If we don't do any sponsorships, it's probably 1500. No. No. There's two of us. Like that barely covers the gas cost. So we Because <laughs> <laughs> right now we have probably four or five videos that we have recorded and we could post them and and but now it's already been 8 days or 9 days since we posted and needs to edit it so it will have been probably like 11 12 days in between two videos posted which is almost two weeks that gives me this really anxious feeling like i can feel it in my chest like right now because youtube is sort of it's what we love to do making videos editing videos connecting with you guys showing you like beautiful spots in the world the the translation work we do it out of necessity i guess if we want to do more of what we love, we would have to post more and then we'd probably get more views as well and then that would make us more money and then we could sort of tone down the translation stuff a little bit. In a way, YouTube gives me a little bit of anxiety because I know that many of you will say, it's fine, just post when you can, you don't have to work your butt off just to post like one more video a week. That's not how it works. That's not how it works on YouTube. Like if you post more regularly, it will help you so much if you can post twice a week for a longer period of time. So we've also been thinking about maybe getting an editor who can edit like the basics for me and I can do like a review and, and then just finish things up. But then we also can't afford that. So we're kind of in limbo. Like right now the financial stuff is solved, but we have to sort of find a balance again between working for YouTube, editing and stuff, and working for freelance. And then also right now, because Canada, we've been driving so much, driving, like, yeah. We just wanted to mention it so that you guys know it's not that if we don't post that we don't care. Because that's what I always am afraid people will think. That we're just like, meh. And it's, that's not, that's absolutely not the case. So yeah.
you guys are not going to believe this. <laughs> like a super huge coincidence actually. If you watch <laughs> any other people who do van life, especially van life in this part of the world at the moment, then you might know Tread the Globe. And just as it happens, we were eating dinner. Scallops, potatoes, super good. And I saw a license plate that did look like from, from here. It's like, hey, they're from the UK. And I was like, I looked at their van like, that's that's, that's Tread the Globe and Kim's like, ha ha, very funny. That's Chris and Marianne from Tread the Globe. We knew they were going to be around. They were heading up to Alaska as well. But we didn't and know I was they were like, already here. I was like, we should probably send them a message to see if they want to have a coffee at some point or something. But I thought they were like in the lower end of BC, but I can confirm <laughs> just, just that right they're here. not. Ready. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to say something or I need to say something or I have no idea what you're doing? Welcome to Trudy Arvan. <laughs> <laughs> we were wondering who was going to introduce them, but then Chris did it. <laughs> this is Chris and Marianne from Tread the Globe. Vinny is over there. Their van is over here, Trudy. Um, and we just happened to bump into these guys because they're in the same area as us. They're on their way back down to it Alaska. Pure coincidence that we actually met up here. Yeah, it is. Yeah, what I is love, the chance in that? I love that Vinny and Trudy are neighbors. Yeah. yeah. They became best buds over the course of the past. <laughs> Like that. <laughs> and these guys. Maybe we'll have little van babies soon. Oh, maybe, maybe. That would be adorable. Little smart van babies. <laughs> smart van. Smart vans. And little ones. these guys are legends because we're driving from Alaska to Argentina, but they're driving around the world. So, like a loop around what the world. What are we doing? We're trying to. What are we doing? <laughs> Which is epic. You're doing in total about a year in North America, right? Yeah. Yeah, a year in North America, and then we've already got uh, the boat booked and planned for next March, uh, we'll be shipping to Australia. To Australia. Yeah. The Outback. The Outback. The outback. Chris Incredible. actually lived in Australia. Kangaroo and, land. And, yeah, and one of our sons lived but in I Australia But I tell you, the drive well. across Australia, I was looking on the map, it's so small compared to the miles <laughs> true, here. True. This is nothing. The miles are nuts. North I mean, America. Just driving up to it's Fairbanks nice. from here, it looks really close on the map, but it's not. <laughs> and it's, it's been amazing talking to them because everything we've been experiencing for the past couple of weeks, like these huge driving distances and not finding internet and yeah. what do you do with your grey water and your black water and etc. They've had it all as well. So that's amazing to be able to talk. Like-minded. Yeah. Yeah, and we feel really bad because sometimes, you know, we put out two videos a week and over this stretch, as we said, with the internet, we can't, it's just not possible um, but, to be able but, to do that. Yeah, I mean, talking to you guys has been like therapy. I feel, yeah. Like, yeah. I've had, yeah. I feel like I've had a counseling <laughs> session. So yeah. we, we you finally saved feel me my therapist. <laughs> internet family. <laughs> internet family. I'm so glad that Vinny reached out to Trudy. But it's so nice to talk to people who are doing yeah. something so similar. Yeah. You just Same, understand, yeah. even if, even if don't say something they'll still know yeah. Like, yeah what it's like and how we feel about life certain on the stuff. road and well, life creating videos we've just, only yeah. we've only known each other for a couple of days yeah. and we're finishing each other's sentences yeah. it's, like, it's like a perfect <laughs> marriage <laughs> and you're not going to share your alaskan hat with them oh okay i think you should <laughs> So, this is this is Alaska is fashion. If you, <laughs> this is a thing. It was a gift from a lady. I know in Alaska. a lovely lady. There you go. <laughs> by to give me a hat. She said, and she, it's a fish. She read the she read the details on our van, and she said, "Wow, you guys are amazing. I wanted to give you an Alaskan <laughs> gift." She I just, feel loved. I why do, really why do we never get a fish hat? Again? She just read your personality perfectly. She was like, she saw the hat and she was like, <laughs> I love that. She, wants, she wants the fish hat. She just she, doesn't know it yet. She doesn't know it. That's it. And the that, fact and that they look at is. you and think that that and you go together yes. says a lot. No, I, think, I think with bear bells and bear, and bear spray, I've got like the look down. You've got to be so careful good. with the bears. They might mistake you for a salmon. Oh my God. <laughs> Is I'm gonna miss family? you guys. We're gonna meet. Well, well we, we got each other's numbers now, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna meet up in BT. Yeah, we're definitely. Gonna, just gonna make it happen. We'll make it happen. Yeah, call me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we'll definitely oh, keep in touch. I'm gonna miss you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you. Yeah, we will. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Oh. It's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, bye bye. Bye bye. Stuart Gassier Highway. And so, White Horse, folks. White Horse, Alaska. White Horse, Alaska. White Horse, Alaska. Today we're gonna go here 
which you can tell, Dawson City, super, super close to the border. So we're gonna drive from here to here. And that is actually where the Klondike Gold Rush started. We're gonna go look for gold. How cool is that? Tim, 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 Tim. Yeah, this is the first Tim Hortons we've come across in, I think several thousand kilometers. So uh, it's time for another Tim. Look there. What? Antlers. That moose antlers or, or like two or three different antlers. What the heck is in that thing on the roof? We're now just outside of Whitehorse. This is Miles Canyon. A beautiful suspensions bridge there. You can see the Yukon River passing through here. Got some hiking trails here. And the really cool thing is that, I mean, Yukon is so remote, it's really hard to imagine even. If you walk off in that direction, or any of those directions, you can keep on walking for hundreds, if not more than a thousand kilometers without coming across anything. There's no civilization there's no people living in that area there's nothing there we met someone yesterday who said there's actually more moose than people living here yeah there's about 35,000 40,000 people living in a Yukon province there's more moose than people and there's, there's about 15 to 20,000 bears here 15 to 20,000 bears which is just is a bear? <laughs> oh it's just, just just a small dog sorry we are trying to get back onto the highway <laughs> i have no idea what's going on there's like construction work going on we've been at this red light for about 10 minutes now and there's this sign that says wait for pilot and it just it doesn't make any sense mm, but i but doubt they're gonna fly us out of here <laughs> but i see um a few cars coming up the other way Oh, it's, oh a pilot. it's a pilot car! Pilot car, okay. It's a pilot car. You have to wait for the car to. Oh, so you go slow and stuff, probably. Yeah, probably that you're oh, not going too fast. Oh, all right. That first car, that's the pilot. Now I get it. <laughs> this makes a lot more sense. I thought they were going to airlift us with a helicopter. <laughs> Take me to the chopper. <laughs> Look at these views over the Yukon Valley. Wow. Guys, I think we just saw our first grizzly bear. Like we're yeah. not entirely sure because it wasn't like a massive one, but, but it was brown, brown yeah. and it appeared to have the signature shoulder hump that a grizzly has. It's just next to the road. It was sitting right next to the road. Like I didn't have a camera in my hands. We drove past it. It was like two, three meters off the road. And then we drove back a little bit um, and it was still around, but yeah. Amazing. For the first grizzly, I think. Because this is still the highway. <laughs> yeah, this is still the highway. We break, we break down the highway because there was no one behind us. Yeah, I mean, um, there's no traffic here. There's like one car that passed in a few minutes. So. That's amazing. It's amazing. Oh my god. Guys, that's a wolf. That is an actual wolf. It's crazy, he's just looking at us. That's a wolf. It's just crazy. There's a wolf. He's just howling. Like this is insane. At first I thought it must be a husky, but it's a wolf. What are the Crazy. odds even up here? It's amazing. I've never seen a wolf in the wild. I've never seen a wolf, period. Yeah. My God. And to think I just got out a couple kilometers ago to take a shot of the car from the outside. Does it look super big? I think it's female or youngerish. Can you tell it has boobs? <laughs> I mean, it's not massive, massive. Insane. It's crazy. A wolf. I can't believe it, we just saw one. It was just standing next to the road, just looking at us. 
But the wildlife we've seen ever since we started Take driving care. further up north. It's still a highway. <laughs> oh yeah, this it's is a highway. Yeah, we should. We had to stop. The wolf was in the middle of the yeah. highway. <laughs> I can't wrap my head around this. It's a wolf in the wild, like a wolf. Twenty minutes just observing a wolf. That is amazing. A wolf in the wild, like a wolf, a wolf. I, I think that's rare even for here. Yeah. Talent at the moon. <laughs> We're at the foreigners in the weird white van. So after a few more hours driving, after so on sometimes very, very dirty roads. Vinny, you're such a dirty boy. He's a really dirty boy. I doubt they're gonna let us into Alaska like this. But anyway, we've made it. We've made it to Dawson City, which is such a cool, vibey little town. Yeah. This town actually originated during the Klondike Gold Rush. So in 1896, this guy called George Carmack was out around here somewhere fishing on the Klondike River for salmon, and he noticed what he thought was a little gold nugget. As it turns out, he was one of the first people to discover gold here in the Klondike River, here in this part of the Yukon. So over the next couple of years, over a hundred thousand people rushed into this area from all across North America. I read somewhere that even the mayor of Seattle was like, <laughs> I need to go there <laughs> and find some me gold. some gold. Out of the one hundred thousand. it was 000, a crazy treacherous journey. I mean, people took a boat to uh, Alaska, uh, the, the, the southeastern part of Alaska, and then made the trek here of more than 1,000 kilometers, I think it's 1,300 kilometers. But there were no roads, there was nothing here. So they had to uh, walk across a really difficult pass. It was like, super treacherous. And you then, couldn't take any donkeys or other packed animals, yeah. so they had to carry their gear in and stuff. They had to carry in everything, and they had to walk and make rafts and boats. And that is how this town came into existence. And even today, it looks like saloony and westerny. Now, there's a really weird tradition here. Um, they have shots which are called the sour toe shots and it's a shot with a toe in it. And it's not like a figuratively toe, it's like a literal human toe in it. First name, last name, where you're from. First name, last name, where you're from. What you want to drink. Okay, okay thank you. you. We entered here, the guys are like, here for the toe, and they're like, yeah, yeah, I wanna, I wanna like, suck on that man toe, that's what I'm here for. Anyway, those people you see over there, they're waiting also to do the toe shot. It'll probably be uh, 20 to 30 minutes waiting time. Well, what do you want for your shot? Yukon Jack, tequila, vodka, white rum, rye, gin, or crown oil? I read that Yukon Jack is the more popular one. And it's traditional. Yeah, it's tra traditional Yukon Jack. Do it. So if you're wondering why is this all going on, uh, well, basically there were, I think it was three brothers, they were moonshiners, they, they were smuggling alcohol uh, across these uh, passes, mountain passes, and one of them uh, got a frostbite on his toe, and his toe was starving and rotting and whatever, I mean, it, it was dead, his toe. So they chopped it off, put it in the moonshine, and then just left it there, like kind of like a novelty something, whatever. And then many, many, many years later, uh, one guy who was hiking and lost somewhere in the wilderness, came across a cabin somewhere, an abandoned cabin. He walked in and was like really happy to find some moonshine there and some stuff that was left there. And when he looked at the moonshine, there was dough in there. And that's how this freak show started. So I get that that still doesn't explain why we're doing the toe shop. I guess it's just because... How can you not? Like, when there's the option to do it, sometimes you have to go outside the comfort zone. I'm guessing the toll will do exactly that. Take you outside the comfort zone. So we have to try it. I just, I just have to stop thinking about it. Because the more I think about it, the more I'm like, blah, blah. We can chop, we can chop. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm as ready as I can be. You can drink it fast. You drink it slow. But your lips must touch the smiling toes. Just your lips, your teeth, your tongue, and your tongue. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
I'm so proud of you. <laughs> it was weird. Yes, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. yeah. You can drink it fast. You can drink it slow. But your lips must touch this gnarly toe. Just your lips. Go deep. Go tongue. Go dancers. <laughs> Launch up. Okay. Oh god. <laughs> but um. <laughs> I wish I had a full pull up there. I could black pale so many people. <laughs> Thank you so much, thank you. It smacked straight into my teeth. Like, I, it wasn't touching at all, and then I had to tilt the glass to find out and my mouth was open, and it smacked straight into my teeth. Oh, okay. This is the most awkward initiation process ever. Scrub it off. Scrub away the toe. Oh my god. I might have to toss this after this. Ah! We'll see you in the morning for some gold pan. Good morning. <laughs> um, we parked out at the visitor information center yesterday evening. We spent the night here because it's allowed. And there weren't that many spots in Dawson where it's allowed, I think. And, and at the visitor information center, <laughs> you can get gold pans. They had a bunch of them. This really cool looking building right behind me, this is the Dawson City General Store. I'm gonna see if I can get us some breakfast here. not just allowed to go pretty much wherever you want and just pan for gold there. You have to go to public land that has not been staked for a mining claim or something by any large corporations because these days it's mostly the large companies that come here to look for gold. At the Tourist Information Center they point you into the right direction and we're gonna go to Claim 6 at Grand Forks on Bonanza Creek Road. Bonanza Creek is where they struck the first gold in the Yukon. Um, Claim 6 is where you can still go as like a tourist or whatever. At the end of this road, people, is gold. This is it. Claim number 6. I've clearly never panned for gold day in my life because, well, I mean, but watch the half YouTube video so I already feel like an expert. First, one must study the soil. I think here's good. Okay. Oh my god, it's sparkly! Which could also just be the light. Just gold? <laughs> Are you rich? Everything looks kind of shiny, so... I don't know. It's kind of cool though. It's... I think it might be too early to quit my day job. There's my gold, that. Oh no, that's not good. <laughs> Check this out. A small piece on my thumb. I think this is gold. That, that tiny? That, that tiny speck. I think that's gold. That is gold. That is gold. Wait, that's gold. Get, uh, can you get the tweezers? Because we're gonna need those. <laughs> Where, my thumb? I think Where is it again? I'm sorry. There. That's that's gold. Yeah. I think there's a small piece here as well on my hand. No, that's not gold. Huh? That that is gold. That's gold. That's gold. Uh -oh. Stop! Oh, there it is, there it is. Stop, stop. Like right above my finger here. Can you see it? It's huge. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, let's let's not quit the day job. Let's just head up to yeah. Alaska. That's yeah. gonna be the next video, by the way. Next yeah. video, we're finally gonna enter Alaska. We'll see, see you in the next one. Bye bye.